everyone, my name is Shira Moskowitz. I'm a special education teacher and an expert here with Understood, and thank you so much for everyone who's joined this Facebook Live. Today we're going to discuss how to support your child with reading and math. Especially in this back to school season, so many parents worry about how their child is gonna succeed and how you can help them at home. And we know this is a topic that a lot of you are thinking about and have some questions about. While some people are still joining us, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a special education teacher in New York City and I've been teaching children with learning and thinking differences for over a decade. I'm also Orn Gillingham certified and that's a program that was designed to support children with dyslexia to help them learn how to read, but it's actually been shown to help all children learn how to read. And not only do I teach children with this methodology, I teach teachers so that they can support their students. I have two children of my own and I host two groups on the Wonder by Understood app one is called Ask an Expert, Dyslexia, Reading, and Math, and the other is a group for New York City parents. To help me get an idea of who's with us today, and I can customize this for you, um, hit the like button if you have a child in elementary school who might struggle with math or reading, and hit the heart button if you have an older child, middle school, high school, or older, who is struggling with reading or math. Great, thank you so much. Awesome, we got it. We got a nice mix here. So many students with learning and thinking differences struggle with either reading or math or both. And there are a lot of different factors that come into play to create those struggles. It could be the actual math or reading skills that are challenging. It could be the ability to process what they're learning that's making things difficult. Or it can just take time for them to feel comfortable with the skill and with them being able to show that they understand it. And all of that is okay. Most teachers understand that and can help your child through the learning process and feel comfortable with the skills that they do have. But what happens when your child comes home and they have homework or they have to study for a test? How do you as a parent help? Even if you remember these skills from when you were in school, nowadays they might be taught differently. So this can be a really big challenge for parents. Let's start first with reading. Reading, I would break up into four main skills. One is phonemic awareness, and that's the ability to identify and work with the sounds in spoken words, like when you're talking. Then comes phonics, that's understanding the sounds that the letters make. Then we have vocabulary, understanding words, and comprehension, understanding a whole story. If your child is struggling with reading, they might be struggling with just one of these areas, or they can be struggling with a couple of them. Maybe you can identify on your own which your child is struggling with, or maybe you need to discuss this with your child's teacher, and either of those are okay. It's not an expectation that you would 100% be able to identify that yourself. But once you've identified, either by yourself or with the teacher, which areas your child is struggling in, there are free technology tools that you can use at home to help your child practice those skills. Let's start with phonemic awareness. There's a what changed skill builder app which is free and it was designed to help develop a child's phonemic awareness it can be used at any age what it does is it gives your child two fake words and it asks them to tell the difference between the two words and by identifying the difference that helps strengthen different phonemic awareness skills if your child's struggling with phonics the Meyerson Academy OG deck is a free virtual app of flashcards that you use to practice sounds. And I use those with my students all the time. Either they can see the letter and they have to produce the sound that that letter makes, or they can hear the sound and have to tell you what letter makes that sound. It includes both audio and visuals, the proper way to say the sound if a child is struggling. And it's a very clean looking app and it's definitely appropriate for all ages. If your child is struggling with reading, snap and read is a free Chrome extension that provides speech to text and read aloud and can simplify difficult words if your child is reading something digital. And that can help your child understand the text. And that's definitely for an older child, maybe a middle schooler, high schooler, who's reading a text that is just hard for them to understand. If your child is struggling with vocabulary at a younger age, I recommend Vocabulary Builder by Magoosh, which is a free app that's gamified. Every level has a bunch of quizzes and it gives your child a word and they have to pick the definition. And if they get it right, 
they've mastered that word or they haven't, it keeps coming up until they've mastered it. And the last part of reading is comprehension. There isn't necessarily an app or a game that I would recommend to support comprehension, but I would recommend finding books that your child's interested in and get them reading and then discuss it with them. After you, either you can set a page limit, let's read 10 pages and then chat, or maybe a time limit, you're gonna read for a half hour and then we're gonna chat. Give them a tangible goal and then say, hey, what happened? Why do you think that happened? What do you think is gonna happen next? And having that conversation really builds their comprehension. In our Wonder group, the community shares tons of resources like this. So I hope that you all can join us and contribute to that conversation. Let's shift over to math for a minute. Math is taught differently now than when it taught than was when most of us were in school. And what's changed is that now a lot more goes into thinking and understanding the reasoning behind how the numbers interact and how it makes sense rather than just memorizing. So what happens when your child comes home from school and there's a math problem and either you don't understand it or you think you know what to do, but your child, you're showing your child, no, no, that's not what my teacher said. My teacher showed me something different. That can feel like an added burden for you because you have no clue what the teacher's asking for. Telling your child, when I was little, we learned it this way and I turned out fine. It may feel a little bit better in the moment to teach your child the skill that you know, but it doesn't alleviate your child's stress when they come to school the next day and they still don't understand what their teacher is teaching them. So using homework as a tool to support your child, not just to get it done and check that box, I would reach out to your child's teacher and ask them for resources. And that way you can understand how your child's learning the math now. My favorite resource that I use personally, I use it with all my students and all my families, is Khan Academy. It is free. You can watch videos of step-by-step -step explanation of every single math skill. They have questions that then you can practice after. So whether you're watching it by yourself so you understand how your child is learning it, you're watching it with your child so you both understand, or your child might be a little bit older and they can watch it on their own, Either way, it's an amazing resource. Khan Academy also has a Spanish version of the site, which is really helpful for some multilingual families. In our Wonder Group, we also share challenges and resources like this regarding math, so I hope you can all join us. Let's take some questions from the community. How do I help my student at home, especially if they're refusing to read at home? So I think most children struggle with reading because it's challenging and they're not interested. So finding something that your child is interested in might take a little more work, but there are printed materials of all varieties. If your child is interested in something, you can read a manual, an article, a book, a graphic novel, a comic book, literally anything. They could be reading the back of the cereal box. Just getting that entryway into reading and get building their confidence in reading will really help. What are great resources for kids with executive functioning challenges and memory challenges? One of my favorite apps for executive functioning and memory is Google Keep. It is a free app that lets you save different notes and to-do lists and it gives you reminders. So what happens is you can set up a checklist or a reminder with your child. So you can both share that reminder, that note, so it goes across accounts. It also goes across devices. So maybe you share it, you access it on your laptop, but your child accesses it on their phone or their tablet. On a mobile device, you can set reminders for a certain day and time or even a certain location. So maybe you wanna remind your child when you get home from school, do these three things. Or when you get to class, you know, when you get to school in the morning, remember to give the teacher this report. And you can set a geotag reminder. So your child will not have, as long as they keep their device with them, they will not have the onus of trying to remember and balance everything. It will pop up when they get to that location, to their school, to hand in that report, to do that then. Um, and Google Keep is free. It's amazing. My question these days are about transitioning to college for a kid with slow processing speed, sport, poor executive function, and focus and dysgraphia. On the plus side, he's extremely gifted, 
but college professors don't care about that when you forget to turn in an assignment. So this sounds like two things going on. When we're concerned about college, which is definitely a really valid concern, I want you to know that there are definitely supports for children with learning and thinking differences in college. I myself, when I was an undergrad, had a student in one of my classes who needed notes provided for him and the college reached out to me and I never knew who the student was and they said, hey, can you take notes and provide it to your professor? So after every week, I would give my professor the notes and that student received them. So there are definitely supports for students with learning and thinking differences. Um, and any accommodation that can be provided in high school is likely able to be provided in college too. As for forgetting to turn in assignments, that may be where you want to talk to the professor, getting agendas, assignments, deadlines in advance, and you can set up whatever support works well for your child. Maybe it's Google Keep like I discussed before, and maybe it's something different, and maybe it's something your professor can, can suggest. But I wouldn't think that just because you're moving on to college, yes, there is a little more independence, but professors are still educators and they're to help you as, as a learner. Um, what are some assistive technology tools that I can help my child? Assistive technology is a general term that talks about resources that are digital that can help your child. Depending on what your child is struggling with, that might be, there, there are so many resources. The question is finding what's great. I recommend looking at Common Sense Media. It is a website that evaluates all sorts of digital environments. They even just recommend and evaluate every movie so that you can see if it's appropriate for your younger child, every app. And if you look in their app recommendations. They have things for executive functioning struggles, for reading challenges, for math challenges, for vocabulary. So I think that's a great place to start if you have an idea of what your child is struggling with and you're not sure what resource. Um, the other resource I can recommend is our Wonder app because parents share challenges and resources all the time there. So you will definitely find some executive functioning supports and ideas on the app. Another question that I'm seeing is why is Common Core taught differently? So in the past few years, Common Core standards have been in the news a lot. And whenever any learning is different, it's often blamed on Common Core. Sometimes the standards that change and that's why things are taught differently. And other times it's just because research has shown us how to teach a skill better. And obviously if there's more research to show us how to do things differently, we want that for our children. Um, one of my favorite examples of this is learning long division. When I was a child, I learned the algorithm, I learned how to memorize it. I didn't necessarily understand exactly how that worked, but I was able to get every question right. Nowadays, when I'm teaching long division, I teach the thinking behind it. So not only can my students do long division, but they can apply that thinking to other areas of math, like fractions or more complex math, even in middle school and high school, like algebra. Um, I saw someone ask for the resources that we recommended. We can definitely add them to the description and you'll be able to find them. But you can also find them on our Wonder Group. I will share a post with those resources as well. So Candy, I hope you join us and everyone else watching. That's about all we have time for today, but thank you all so much for joining us. I appreciate you all being here. If you enjoyed the conversation that we had, or if you have more questions like this, these are the types of interactions that we have with our groups on the Wonder app, where we answer your specific questions on different topics as they relate to learning and thinking differences, and specifically how to address reading and math challenges. For those of you who'd like to join us, we've shared the link 
throughout this discussion. I hope to see you there and see you next time.